<laughs> well, you can see, not only is the Quran full of these anachronisms, it just does not understand history at all. We're gonna show you three examples where they, in every case, they've got the event too early. Not just a few years, not just a few hundred years, thousands of years too early. Watch and see what we're talking about. It's, it's obvious that whoever wrote the Quran didn't know their history very well. Now, you can understand if you're borrowing this from other materials, you're borrowing it from other sources, as we're gonna see, most of the Quran is borrowed from other sources. When you have Abdul Malik and Al-Hajjaj, they have to put a Quran together very quickly. You've got to go, there's nothing there, it's ex nihilo, you've got to stare and find what already exists. So you go and get a little bit here, you get a little bit there, you get it from the Ethiopians, you get it from the Zoroastrians, you get some from the Jews, you get some from the Christians, you get some from the Gnostic, and then you slap it all together. But you don't own this material and you are not a historian yourself. You can see why they make this mistake. And already we looked at the Samaritans. Yeah, this reference to Samaritan is just too early. It's 700 years too early. Here's another one. Let's go back to the slide. And here we have a mosque, which is too early. Another problem here. Now in chapter 17, verse one of the Quran, it says this, glorified is he who took his slave for a night journey by night. This is known as the Miraj or the Mi'raj. How would you pronounce yeah. it? Yeah, Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, basically. That's from, the, uh, the journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, and that's the Al-Isra, and then Al-Mi'raj, basically the ascension itself. And so this happens in the middle of the night, he's woken up, yeah. told to get on the back of the winged horse called the Burak, he's flown up to, from Mecca up to Jerusalem, and he went up to the seven heavens. So that's, right. and that's, so it is, in chapter 17, verse one, this is the reference to that, according to all the Muslim exegetes, that, that occurrence. So by night from Al-Masjid Al-Haram, now what does Al-Masjid Al-Haram mean? Well, I mean, right now, today, if you say that, everybody will gravitate towards Mecca. Okay, I mean, it's the Kaaba. That's basically the holy space, the holy area, the holy shrine, the holy temple area. But it means forbidden place of bowing, doesn't it? Right, I the mean, that's why it's called Haram. Uh, haram basically uh, has its roots with the word Haram, Ivan, meaning prohibited, and a prohibition here that no pagans can go uh, to the mosque, technically speaking. So it's a holy space. It's a holy space, Yeah. forbidden place. Right. To the Masjid al-Aqsa, what does that mean? Well, it's the far mosque. Mm -hmm. And of course today, uh, if you say that word, the people will start thinking about, you know, the, the mosque by the Dome of the Rock, and we're talking Jerusalem, technically We're talking speaking. about Jerusalem, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. everybody, if you ask anybody, Masjid al-Haram would be Mecca, Masjid al-Aqsa would be Jerusalem. Well, isn't it interesting, that's, that's not really what it's saying there. Nonetheless, this is what every Muslim believes. Well. If you look at that picture there, take a look at the picture that we have there. Here you can see the Dome of the Rock. Can you see the Dome of the Rock right in the center of the citadel? Right. And just south of it, I've pointed to that, if the other blue arrow is the Masjid al-Aqsa. That's the farthest mosque. That's the one that they're claiming chapter 17, verse one is about. Problem is, hold on, stop and think. Muhammad is uh, in the middle of the night, he goes to this Masjid al-Aqsa. So there is a Masjid, that means that it is up there, is a Masjid is a mosque. There's a mosque there in Jerusalem, and this is happening in 621. So this is the year before he goes up to Medina. This is the year before the Hijrah. Uh, and that would suggest therefore that there, if there's a mosque there, there have to be Muslims there. You can't have a mosque without Muslims, right? That's true. Has Muhammad even gone to Jerusalem? Is, has Islam even passed? Has it even moved out of Medina yet? Not unless it came from Jerusalem. That's a whole different story. But technically speaking, that term is used, you're right, to a community of Muslims where they go and pray. See, you can't have Islam up in Jerusalem until Muhammad even creates Islam. Islam was not, it didn't even become a caliphate for another, another three years in 624. Right. Muhammad hasn't even gone, there is no count anywhere in any of the standard Islamic narrative that he ever went to Jerusalem outside of this story where he went on the uh, Bing Walls. But in order for the Islam to be there, there has to have been Muhammad first to have introduced Islam. There are no Muslims. Most, Islam didn't even come to Jerusalem and did not take over Jerusalem until 638. If Muhammad died in 632, this is six years after he's dead. So this is happening in 621. You've got a real problem here, historically speaking. Right. So, so you can see it's just much too early. And it can't be that mosque. And Muslims always say, well, that's there, Jay, it's there. You can go see it. And they give me pictures of it all the time. That mosque that's there, that's on the southern wall, it was built in 710. It was built after Abdul Malik. 
right. by Al Walid. Al Walid. Al Walid. His Walid. son. Yeah. It was yeah. his son that built that one. And it can't be the Dome of the Rock because that was built by Abdul Malik in 691. That's the Golden Dome there. Right. So you, you've got a problem coming and going with this. And that's why the Quran is full of these historical anachronisms. So, Muslims, you, got, you can't have it both ways. So, that's way too early. Let's look at another one that's too early. And this is the chain mail. Coats of chain mail. That's what you use, these small little pieces of, of, of mail that keep the swords from piercing into you. Very effective in- That's a sword. military uniform. It's a military uniform. Uh, and according to chapter 34 of the Quran, verse 10 to 11, it says, and we certainly gave David, this is David, the King David, that we know in the Bible, and we made pliable for him iron, commanding him, make full coats of mail and calculate precisely the links. So it's even referring to the links that you have, the one link after another that interchangeable, that, that keeps it together and puts it on as a, uh, like a coat, like you can see in the picture there. Now, stop and think this through. David lived in 1000 BC. Coats of chain mail were not invented till 200 BC. That's 800 years later. You cannot have chain mail at the time of David. Can you? Now that's a real problem because if this is if this if the Muslims really want to think that this is historical, you've got to take that verse out of the Quran because you cannot have this that early. So here's three different times when it's gone way too early. Not only with the Samaritan, we also have it uh, with the mosque. I want to go to one more one that is way too early and. That's the next one. So let's go to the next one, and this is a crucifixion. In the Quran, it talks in chapter 7, verse 121 to 124, that Pharaoh said to the sources at the time of Moses in 1400 B, and he says this, Indeed, this is a conspiracy which you conspired in the city to expel therefrom its people, but you are going to know I will surely cut off your hands and your feet in opposite sides. Then I will surely crucify you all. All this is you know, uh, Moses is there. He is uh, creating all these amazing miracles, doing things that that the sorcerers cannot do. And Pharaoh is upset with his sorcerers because they cannot keep up with Moses. So he turns him and says, "I will surely crucify you." That's in chapter seven. In chapter twenty, it's the same thing is basically repeated, where Pharaoh turns to the magicians. And he says, we believed in him before I gave you permission. Indeed, he is your leader who has taught you magic. So I will surely cut off your hands and your feet on opposite sides, and I will crucify you on the trunks of palm trees, and you will surely know which of us is more. So here we're talking in 1400 BC, he's talking about crucifixion of these magicians, these sorcerers who cannot keep up with Moses. That's 1400 BC. Then we go to chapter 12, verse 41. Now let's jump back to the time of Joseph, 1800 BC. So now we're 400 years even earlier. And here, the Pharaoh, that's a problem as well, because we know there are no Pharaohs at that, that, that time. But he says, O oh, two companions of the prison, as for one of you, he will pour out wine for his Lord to drink, and as for the other, he will be crucified. So here we have three references to two crucifixions in two different time periods, 400 years apart. Here's the problem. Crucifixions were never ever used in Egypt, first of all. Secondly, we don't have any references to any crucifixions until the Phoenicians actually invent this, right. this process, and that's 500 BC. But in this case, with Moses, we're talking about 1400 BC, and we're talking about 1800 BC, which is 1,000 to 1,300 years much too early. Right, and, and notice the, the amazing thing it was invented 500 BC, meaning 500 before the coming of Christ, yet Isaiah prophesied about Christ, the suffering servant, to be crucified, pierced for our sins 200 years before this happened. Absolutely. Isn't that interesting? So you ask the same question of the Bible here. Yeah. The Bible gets it correct. The Bible even gets the action of persecution correct. You pierce the hand, you pierce the feet 200 years before it happened. The Quran not only gets it incorrect, gets it uh, in this case, a thousand to thirteen hundred years right, out right. of date, but obviously it gets this incorrect. But next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you where they get a crucifixion they should have got right. They get that even wrong. But that's coming up next. Wonderful. Thank you so much, brother. And of course, next time we will be focusing on the same theme, except different examples. Uh, here's a crucifixion that they should have got. Wonderful. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone. Until next time, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. 
Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel Sierra International and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.